Why did the Algonquians eventually leave the land that they were indigenous to after years of forming their own communities and tribes? Well, it starts with addressing the racism of those in perceived power. As godless individuals, as they called them Indians, both the French and British felt it was their divine duty to propagate religion in honor of the Crusades and manipulate land ownership from the Moors to themselves, beginning with the French trying to claim native territories from 1701 to 1714 in the region and the British laying claim to the region in response to the lack of colonial American support in the Seven Years' War, lack of compliance to pay taxes, and of course the Revolutionary War. The Algonquians were not foreign to invaders trying to lay claim to the land. One should research the Telegus Wars of Turtle Island to understand the native Moorish mound building bearing straight crossing and land protectors were fighting centuries of potential invaders trying to usurp what is not anyone's to protect. This clear distinction on how business should be conducted is separated by clear divine inspiration and guidance against clear economic progression at all costs. Now to simplify this scenario, let's break down the legacy of paths that led to the Algonquians no longer being present in the region as they were initially. The first and longest lasting exodus came in the form of mass migrations out of the Canadian region due to the numerous conditions, lack of food supplies, harsh climate, famine, droughts, and constant wars for the land and workforce of the people. These Moors that migrated further south ended up going as far as possible, leaving a trail of melanated souls through the continent from the Algonquians to the Seminoles to the Aztecs to the Mayans. For the remainder that adjusted to the region of Nova Scotia, their destinies took a drastically different turn. The French was the first nation to make the natives friends before stabbing them in the back with a metaphoric knife which came in the form of a treaty. In simple terms, a treaty can be defined as a formally concluded and ratified agreement between countries, communities, etc. Both the French, then British, went at each other for the region of land. But the British ultimately won and eventually made the biggest and most impactful moves to sway the livelihood of the Mikimaki. With the main objectives being clear and consistent the colonists drafted and presented treaties to get access to build colonies freely to convert the sinful souls into Catholic souls and overall to expand its power. The Moors signed these treaties in order to come to peaceful arrangements. They signed to get peace in the region and unlimited access to everything needed for daily living activities, which include fishing, hunting, trading, etc. The bulk of these treacherous treaties were drafted, presented, and signed between 1725 and 1761. If one thinks, why were they drafting, presenting, and signing treaties for almost 40 straight years? When the Moors would refuse to sign the nonsensical treaty that was obviously lopsided, the colonists would either conspire wars and battles until convinced or plainly and consistently lied about what the intention of the treaties were and the ultimate goals for the Moorish presence that originated in the region and has maintained for centuries. By the time the Mikimaki tribe realized they were being played in these treaties, it was too late and the colonists already had enough colonies to begin executing the final steps of the plan. Finish the foundation of their new found land post-Crusades, as well as remove the last groups of Moors onto a more spacey and roomy area of Canada, where no colonists would ever bother the Moors and no more would ever have to be or live around a colonist. They created, removed, and placed the natives on land reserves or reservations throughout the region on the worst of lands, starting in 1801 and lasting until 1949. The colonists of Great Britain built as many reservations on the worst land that Canada had to offer, 
many Moors continue to migrate away from the chicanery and further south, and many colonists gain elite upper class status due to the monetizing of faith transfers into Catholicism, as well as the new career paths as native interpreters, Catholic church clergy members, and or missionary recruiters, converting other Moors, which they consider not civilized enough, but like all cosmic phenomena, there was a major effect from the Catholic propaganda machine of the colonists. When they formed the first Micmac, Maki Maki, missionary society to convert the livelihood and usurp the culture of the Moors, a great emphasis was placed on what to do on the reservations on the downtime.